Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Today, what we're going to be attempting to do in this nice short video is turning uh, some carbon rods, these graphite gouging rods for welding or something. Uh, we're going to attempt to turn these into very simple uh, gas diffusion electrodes for electrochemistry. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so let's say this is a half cell for an electrochemical reaction. We have a salt bridge uh, going off to another half cell over here. We have this filled with maybe sodium chloride solution. We have an electrode and what we want to do on this electrode, let's say it's the cathode of an electrochemical cell, what we want to do is reduce chlorine gas to chloride ions. Now to do this, obviously we need that reduction reaction to occur on the electrode surface. So um, let's say we have, that's how I learned to draw it back in high school, um, some kind of enclosed container over the electrode and we have an input of chlorine gas. And now on the electrode surface, provided that we have the rest of our electrochemical cell set up correctly and our electrode is inert, uh, chlorine should react on the electrode surface uh, in the reduction reaction here. That's how I remember learning about it in high school. However, it's not quite that simple because for this reduction reaction to actually occur on the electrode surface, uh, it can only actually occur on the junction between the solution, the electrode and our gas inside this closed container. So clearly the only place where um, the reaction can actually occur is along this boundary right here, which is really not a very high surface area for the reaction and the reaction will be unimaginably slow. In order to get a reaction like this to occur at an appreciable rate, uh, what you need is some kind of gas diffusion electrode, which involves having some kind of porous conductive membrane where you have liquid on one side and gas on the other. Say you have something like porous conductive carbon felt for your electrode through here. Obviously there is a whole lot of microscopic little bits of surface area where the liquid over on one side the gas over on the other side and the actual conductive electrode can all meet and actually cause the reaction to occur. And so that's what they use in things like fuel cells where you need hydrogen and oxygen gases to react in uh, an electrochemical cell or fuel cell really. Normally, however, it's even less simple than that because what you need in your um, carbon felt electrode is some kind of catalyst to catalyze the reaction uh, of the gas reacting in your electrochemical cell. Normally that's maybe platinum or palladium. So if you look online to buy a gas diffusion electrode, that's what you'll find. Uh, it's the carbon felt kind of injected with some small amount of maybe platinum catalyst, hence why they are quite expensive. Now, if you wanted to make a proper gas diffusion electrode, obviously this would be quite tricky because making some kind of carbon felt and then injecting it with some kind of small amount of catalyst is a really tricky job. However, the purpose uh, that I need a gas diffusion electrode for, a paper suggested by Telectronics in a YouTube comment, actually seems to not require a catalyst on the carbon surface. Apparently, the reaction actually occurs on graphite rather than on your platinum or palladium or whatever other catalyst you're using in the gas diffusion electrode. So I'm hoping that if we're able to put together some kind of carbon electrode that's porous enough to let gas flow through it so that there's a high surface area um, of junction between the gas electrode and solution that we are putting in our electrochemical process, I'm hoping that we might be able to synthesize a small amount of hydrogen peroxide by the reduction of oxygen gas on a cathode surface. So the first thing we need, obviously, uh, in order to make a gas diffusion electrode out of carbon is some form of carbon which is porous enough to allow gas to permeate through it. 
So I was looking online for like types of carbon felt which might be conductive or something and you know, they were pretty expensive. But then I remembered seeing a video from Ben over at Applied Science who was doing, uh, what was it? It was graphite air bearings or something like that. It was a very cool video. In fact, it's a very cool channel, Applied Science. Anyway, he showed in that video that pretty much all forms of graphite are definitely porous enough to pass air or gas through them. And so I thought I've got quite a bit of carbon in the form of graphite electrodes. And maybe these will actually work if we can somehow inject gas down through the center of these electrodes. They're probably porous enough to let the gas permeate through the rest of the carbon and interact with uh, any solution that we put our electrode into. So what I'm thinking is we have our electrode. I reckon we'll drill a hole down inside it. And when we do our synthesis, we can inject oxygen gas in through the center of the electrode and it should hopefully be porous enough to allow a high surface area of connection between the gas, the oxygen gas and the solution that we're dipping our electrode into. So the first thing we're going to want to do is maybe let's take this piece of graphite and we'll drill a hole that goes right down through the middle. And there we are, we have a very nice hole down the middle of our electrode. Broke off a little bit at the top, but that's all right. Uh, you can see, or maybe you can't really, but that hole goes uh, right down to a bit over halfway down the electrode. So hopefully that's good. Uh, just gotta now connect that up to some kind of tube to pass gas through it. There we go. Uh, just wrapping the electrode in a bit of Teflon tape and uh, putting on the right size bit of plastic tube. Uh, that should do nicely. We'll supply air or oxygen through the tube and hopefully if we dip this into a solution of water we should see uh, an amount of gas flowing through the porous carbon. Alrighty, I just tried blowing into it with my lungs to see if any gas would come out of the carbon and I got a couple of tiny little bubbles but obviously human lung pressure is not enough to get a appreciable amount of gas flowing through our porous carbon. So maybe uh, let's try connecting this up to a bike pump or something. Yeah, this works way better, watch this. Nice. What are we running at? A bit under 20 PSI, so that's not too bad. I think uh, if it works, it'll work quite nicely for our hydrogen peroxide synthesis. What I'll do is just get a small little 12 volt compressor. We only need, what, 20 PSI. Uh, and I'll hook that up. We'll just pump air through our electrode and hopefully we'll be able to synthesize hydrogen peroxide by the reduction of oxygen gas in a future video. So till then, see you later.